This is a simple shader function. Now this function essentially will take our brightness and take it from light to dark. Now it may seem daunting at first, but let's break this function down. Now, first we have the shader type. The shader type will simply allow us to find that it's a canvas item. Now inside of this function, or inside of this shader, we can now define a function void fragment. So void fragment or fragment is a function which calculates the color of each pixel rendered by the shader. So let's break down each of these lines of code and see what each of them do. Texture color simply gets the current texture color of whatever texture we are attaching the shader to. Now we're going to skip to the third line here and we'll come back to the second, but this line of code essentially takes our brightness, which we calculated in a previous line, that's the modulation to one. Now the modulation specifically is A. So if we actually look at the vector four, you'd think vector four is four things. Now that is because the fourth one is going to be the actual uh, alpha of the uh, shader itself. Now, what about the other line of code? The float brightness is a function or a uh, sign function. We're taking a sign function here and calculating the brightness over time. Now, this is the line of code that where all the magic happens. But what, are, what is this? What is happening here? Let's try to visualize this a little bit. If we take sine x on a graph, it looks something like this. We go from negative pi over 2, from negative 1, all the way to positive. And it just goes up and down, just like this. Now this might not be exactly what we want because that's a little slow, but we can make it a little faster by adding 2x. Now it might be a little too high, so we can just multiply it by 0.5 and make the graph a little smaller on the top and bottom. Now lastly, in order to make our uh, pixels for our actual modulation proper and actually look uh, bright, and not dark too much, and we'll see what this looks like in just a second with an example in Godot. We're going to take the entire graph and add it 0.5 up, and we're going to essentially make everything positive. Before we dive in, I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you're like me and you love learning through hands on problem solving, Brilliant is the perfect platform for you. Brilliant is all about interactive learning, whether it's math, data analysis, programming, or AI. You get to learn by doing. It's not just about memorizing formulas or watching videos like we all kind of dread in high school. It's about truly understanding concepts by applying them yourself. The best part? Brilliant's lessons are designed to build your problem-solving skills step-by-step. Hands-on approach helps you see why behind each concept, which is something I always try to do which makes it far more effective than passive learning. Studies show it's six times more effective than just watching lectures. And it's perfect for busy schedules as well. You can learn anytime, anywhere, right from your phone. It's great for turning a few spare minutes into something productive, whether it's during a commute or just relaxing at home. I know a lot of us will also just doom scroll while when we're commuting, so this is maybe a little bit more productive than that. Recently, I've been loving their data science course. Uh, they make it easy to understand complex topics like data visualization and working with real world uh, data sets. The best part is that it's super practical. You're actually using data from sources like Airbnb and Spotify to draw insights on how these things work. If you want to experience Brilliant yourself, you can try everything they have to offer for free for a full, full 30 days. Just head to brilliant.org slash codingquests or click the link in the description. Plus, if you decide to continue, you'll get an additional 20% off on their uh, annual premium subscription. Don't miss out on the chance to level up your skills today. All right, on to the video. Now, inside of Godot, what does this look like? Well, we have our shader here, exactly like we wrote it, exactly the same, and this is what it looks like. We add it in, it takes our shader or our current texture and simply takes it to dark and then back up. Now that is the sign function that we saw. Now what happens though if I remove all of these parameters? When I save, well, I don't have to save it, but here we go. Now you can see it just goes black much slower and it's just a little different. So 
let's add those things back. Let's add, I keep control S. Let's add two. And now you can see that it simply changes a little faster. Now the plus 0.5 allows us change a little uh, or stay in the dark a little less. Now we can multiply this by 0.5 as well. You can now see that it changes in the dark a little slower. So it stays in the dark uh, basically zero time. And that is because on the graph of the sine function, it barely touches that y-axis, or sorry, the x-axis, right? That is where the brightness will go below the black. Hopefully this helped a little bit in understanding shaders, and the explanation was a little quick, and I tried to condense a lot of it. If you guys want a more in-depth explanation of shaders and such, uh, please leave a like and comment down below. Let me know what you guys would like to see next, and I will hopefully see you all in the future.